here's some exploring I did with this reference. Now, for example, the first one I did, I explored it pretty representationally, but I simplified it. So you can see the photo I worked from, and I'm simplifying the information in the area that seems to be the busiest. I will we'll explore this. Here's another tonal plan that I'm, I'm kind of switching the roles a little, where I'm moving the lighter values over to the right and darkening the, the uh, flower vendor under the canopy. And then, and notice I turned it into a horizontal format instead of a vertical. So there's another compositionally you can explore. And then here's another uh, tonal plan I developed from the same piece of re reference, just trying to keep it simple. Really, you know, the lights, as if I'm going to stay true to the photo, lights kind of go washed out, darker colors, things in shadow tend to go darker and lose their color. Not only that, you lose a lot of nuances that you see with your eye. So make those really dark. You've seen the exercise before. If you want to test it, just go over here and make a mark on your value plan. So I want that really dark. So I'm going to move over here. I think you noticed my palette. I had some lines drawn. I, I, I organize that way so that I don't, I'm not trying to search for a, uh, a color that I've been mixing and try to keep them separated a bit. But that's just my own personality. Right along this little pole here. If I start to pick, I'll leave that. I like some of those striations that happen. Okay, so it just right on down. Don't don't pet it. Pick your brush up, wipe it clean. Filter. Okay, now that is starting to happen. Though it's a different proportion than this, I am seeing the uh, values emerge. Uh, I see the big shapes to emerge. Which Make this read as if she has a. She basically the shirt is basically white with a pattern on it. Herself, which. Just get out your gouache. Get a tube of white, permanent white gouache or ivory and ivory black. A little sable round. And take out some photographic reference or go sit, uh, um, find a place to sit in your house and paint some still lifes. And explore. Take one setup and explore it several different times. That looks reads a little more. That reads more towards the purple, and I want it to read a little blue. Right, that's a gray green. Look at that compared to that. Much grayer. It is lighter. What if we want to make it a little darker? We can do that. We've got one more to do, and this one we're going to really raise the chroma on all the color. The point of this exercise is taking one piece of reference, taking those fundamentals and translating it in different value plans, different color plans, um, you know, chroma, higher chroma, grayer color. Compositionally, we change the plan from a vertical to a horizontal. It's kind of limitless what you can do. This one I'm going to do next. So. I'm going to clean up my palette. This will be up on my board, and this is what we'll do next. We're going to raise up the chrome. Okay, I'd like to explore one more value plan. 
go back to our uh, go back to these tonal plans here here and here this one I didn't explore yet so I'm going to explore that one right here on break I quick sketched it in real quickly and uh, so you can see the difference between these how how uh, different they are from each other and what happens okay that's reading that to me is reading like that let's let's get her reading the same way more say red flowers right in here and still it's I want it lighter than these but I still want it to read as if it's shadow actually that will we'll have more purple in it and then her arm in white the goal of this exercise was to encourage you to experiment was encourage you to take one piece of reference, whether it's a photo, is, uh, is what I work from, a still life, landscape, whatever you choose to work from, and in, interpret it using the mixing up the fundamentals and the proportions. Interpret it as in as many ways as you can. And I want to, I hope I can get across that a painting, if it's a, a beautiful at any stage, then it's a painting. And... Uh, again, our reference is only our reference. Your painting has to have a life of its own. You have to get to a point where it tells you, you let it tell you what it needs. I love some Matisse's as much as I love some Andrew Zorn's, and they're, they're very different from each other. But they had a real art spirit to them, and a completeness and a cohesiveness. And in this all this experimenting, I hope, helps you get closer to say what you want to say as a painter.